Welcome back, adventurers, once again to Let's Play Chaos Head. And in the last episode, against his better judgment, Takami Nishijo decided to return to Suome Academy, regardless of his trepidation. And lo and behold, he was greeted not only by Rimi Sakihato, who has returned after her quote unquote absence, but also Daisuke Misumi himself has also. Uh, been making a conscious effort to try and get back into his old habits again. And so the three of them hung out together in the homeroom in the morning, and the conversation later turned to Ayase Kishimoto's condition. I think Daisuke wants to visit the hospital, albeit for his own reasons, although uh, despite the initial frostiness between himself and Ayase, Daisuke um, actually does, well, he's not a complete and total jerk. Anyway, lunch break. I always skipped lunch because I didn't want to eat by myself in the classroom. I had no one to eat together with. Lately, Rimi had been inviting me to eat with her, but as you might as well imagine, I became embarrassed and ended up refusing, which is understandable since people haven't quite forgotten uh, the unfortunate antics through which uh, Takami was dragged, much to his eternal shame. Which was why when we reached lunch break, I left the classroom and retreated to a place where I could find peace. I think there's only one place where Takami Nishijo would go in Suome Academy. Oh no, here's, turns out, different locations. At time, times it was the library, and at times it was the courtyard. But after the previous mention, uh, previously mentioned disturbance, everyone in the school had come to recognize my face, and I couldn't calm down no matter where I went. Gazes stabbing into me without mercy. Sneers and insults thrown my way. Yet again, another instance of similarity between Takami Nishijo and Kozue Orihara. Today too I walked around school, but it had the opposite effect of exposing me to even more disparagement. And when I had no, I thought I had no other option but to flee to the bathroom, which would be probably an even bigger mistake. I spotted Nanami from behind, behind the passage. Sorry, let me read that again. I spotted Nanami from behind in the passage, leading to the freshman building. She appeared to be walking to her classroom alone. She doesn't seem to have noticed Takami. Come to think of it, I hadn't spoken to Nanami once since that incident. I'd avoided bumping heads with her all week long. So could uh, Hazuki have been right? Because I hadn't known what kind of expression to make when I saw her. Too true. I was the worst kind of brother, one who had prioritized my own life over hers. Which again is uh, one of the many contributing factors to your lack of a D sort right now. It was no more, more than a miracle that Nanami had been safely released. I hadn't done a thing. Almost too miraculous in my book. Maybe Shogun had told Nanami that it was my fault he'd abducted her. It again reminding the fake Shogun, not the true one. If so, she'd definitely be furious at me. She'd disdain me and maybe she wouldn't listen to me. If that were the case, you kind of half deserve it. That was why I didn't have the courage to go see her. But now that I'd spied her like this of all times, I started to get worried. He hadn't done anything unthinkable to her, had he? He hadn't hurt her in some way, had he? She wasn't psychologically wounded, was she? Takami tying himself up in knots with his anxiety yet again. And then there's that. For, me for a second, memories of that hand revived at the back of my mind. 
but I shook my head to rid myself of them. That severed hand, and the bracelet it wore, and the cell phone it held. All of them had been delusions. Realistic delusions. Hmm. If only we could be certain of that, because the phony Shogun also knew about the hand. Although he too posited the thought that they might have been fakes as well. Because the hand was no longer in my fridge, it had seemed more natural to think that, rather than having vanished, it hadn't been there from the start. The hand, and the cell phone, and the bracelet, lit, and the cardboard box, and the packing peanuts. None of me being alive and well like this served as proof of that. At some point I'd started running. I chased after Nanami. Her form grew larger as I approached. Hmm. But even if that hand was a, truly a delusion, it isn't the only delusion. Nanami still hadn't noticed me. While she walked along, she used the fingertips of her right hand to toy with the ends of her hair, twirling it, staring, uh, rather forlornly into the distance. As I dashed up, I started to cry out to her. My sister's right sleeve slipped down a little as she twisted her hair. Sensing something wrong, I gulped down my voice. I halted. I'd seen it. It was a very minute sense of wrongness, one that truly didn't matter at all, but... But, it does matter. White. Wound around. Inconspicuous. A bandage. Now on a more positive note, it could very well be likely that Nanami simply either sprained her wrist or something. But yet again, it's all too convenient. On her right hand. Her wrist. Yeah, that was too convenient. Far too convenient for my liking. And we're on chapter 8. IR2. Or is that IR squared? And we're back at Freezer Investigations. Yet again. When Momose called him out, Barn showed his face at the Freezer Investigations company half an hour after their promised meeting time. Yeah, Barn is as tardy as ever, it seems. But then again, that might be to his Just favor. Mimose's yell flying towards him as soon as he entered the office. Hunching his neck, Barn put on an amiable smile and walked up to the desk of Freezer's company president. He hadn't brought any, any refreshments today was starting to think, uh, he was starting to regret it, thinking he'd made a mistake. Make that two mistakes. In other words, Barn's flying solo. I think the phrase here is guilty as charged. But then again, despite his laid-back, carefree demeanor, Barn is taking the entire case seriously. Although he's still uh, behaving in a rather nonchalant fashion. <sighs> Hunter, 
こうして俺を呼びつけたってことはあの子と連絡取れたってこと、うん、今来てるわさすがモモちゃん Interesting. ちなみにかわいい子かい Seeing Barn grin at Leah, Momose whapped him on the head. It was a rather staring thack. One with some nice wrist action in it. You pretty much deserve that one. It's about the Bagana could eat the Janaya, Royaji. It's all done, not kind of seeing something、uh, very reminiscent of Rimi and Daisuke here. It was something Barn has. Had requested of Momose as a personal favor. He wanted to have an individual conversation with a certain person who was connected to one of the new gen cases. So he asked her to create a setting in which the two of them could meet. Could it be Ayase? Or did he finally manage to track down Senna? He had intended to discuss something based on purely personal circumstances, nothing presently related to the new gen investigation, at least for the moment. Due to his position, Barn couldn't get a jump on the other detectives at headquarters and go to meet her on his own as part of work. Indeed, it's a rather hard life for a lowly assistant inspector. Who is this mystery contact? Nudging Barn onward, Mimose headed for a corner of the office. A narrow space filed,、uh, surrounded by file packed shelves could be found there. It was the space that they used as a waiting room, and two couches with room for two people apiece had been crammed in there. When Barn Followed Mimose in, a lone girl was sitting there. She wore the Suome Academy uniform. Head lowered and shoulders slumped, she appeared horribly worn out. Ayase is、uh, still in the hospital, so that rules her out. The girl raised her head in startlement when Mimose addressed her. Her glasses slipped down a little and she adjusted them with her finger. It's none other than. You were Kusunoki. Uh, yeah. Heki, this. Hmm. I wonder if this means that she has been liaising with Frieza Investigations the entire time she was, uh. trying to investigate Takumi. Upon seeing Barn, she nodded to him with a somewhat intimidated expression. Barn felt a bit wounded. In his own way, he'd been aiming for an attitude and appearance that wouldn't scare anyone, but he was forced to acknowledge that the fierce, high pressure atmosphere u n i t e d detectives had come creeping out regardless. He smiled wryly at himself on the inside, knowing he still had a long ways to go. And sat down facing Yua. Ksunoki, Yua san, done it? Hi. Is she going to mention、uh, what she's found on Takumi? Certainly won't b- bode well for him if it does. Nakunata Mia san no, Futango no ane. Tore de Machiga in Aikana. Huh, so. Yua had a twin sister, Mia, who unfortunately has passed away given Barn's remark. Late Mia Kusunoki. Pulling her chin back a tad, Yua answered with a nod. The first new gen case, the group diving. A girl named Mia Kusunoki had been among the five high school students to jump off and die. Ah. Well, that's another mystery thread that has、uh, conveniently tied itself off. It also explains why、uh, 
you guys actually been so intent on uh, hounding Takumi Nishijo this whole time. Once she was discovered, that is. So all the pieces are finally starting to thread themselves together. <laughs> You're trying to be disarming, Barn, but I hate to break it to you, it's not going to work. <laughs> That's uh, not what I'd call a light chat conversation. ちょっとばんちゃん。まあ、悪いね。職業病ってやつか。気を使うような言い方できなくてな。ただ、気になってたんだ。捜査本部でも話題になってたんだが。I wonder what Barn means by uh, peculiar survivors. Barn! Yes, it's fine. had half risen at the insensitivity of Barn's statements, but you were silenced. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, as insensitive as he is, Ban really does have a penchant for getting to the heart of the matter. あ、集団ライブで飛び降りた5人には自殺する理由なんてなかった。家族や友人はみんなそう主張している。Indeed, and as far as I can tell, those statements haven't changed. With the exception of the Kusanokis, Ban took out the fan stuck in his belt and began to fan himself. Now that is strange that you as parents would ultimately uh, keep quiet about this whole entire affair. Anguish sheeped into Yua's voice. Saishua Miachan no chicken no shirase ukita hiva. So de demo nighty tandes. Otosan mo kasan mo. Totemo tsuraso deshta. That in and of itself is understandable. Demo tsugino hino asa. Nazeka ftariva tano so ni warati tandes. Miachan no shino maito. Matako najini modote tandes. That is peculiar. わたし、わけがわからなくて。二人はミヤちゃんのことを忘れようとしてるんじゃないかって思って。そうしたらお父さんがお前に妹なんていないよって。ミヤちゃんが残した洋服とか靴とかを見せても全然取り合ってくれない
それで警察にもうちは一人っ子だって言って追い返してたわけか私とミュウちゃんは一卵性で見た目はウリ二つなんですけどあの子は妹は親から嫌われていましたはあ、そういうことは、the oldest sibling apparently あの子はいつも自分の気持ちを押し殺して私のことを一番に考えてくれていたんです。Now that is an interesting detail. She always suppressed her own emotions. That sounds ominously、uh, very similar to how Yua was behaving with Takami when she was deliberately interrogating him. Rather forcefully, I might add. Maybe Yua was affected by Mia's death more than we thought. As Yua spoke, she recalled a memory from the time when Mia had been alive. It was when they were still in elementary school. One day, their relatives brought them a single big teddy bear as a present. In opposition to the delighted Yua, Mia said she hated stuffed animals and wouldn't give it a second glance. In other words, Yua and Mia were pretty much opposite ends of the spectrum. Their relatives and parents were repelled by Mia's not childish behavior. Even then, Yua had secretly told, the two th told her that the two of them should share and treasure it. But Mia only answered, I don't want stuffed animals so you can have it. About a month later, when Yua had become, was starting to become bored with the teddy bear, she woke abruptly late at night and witnessed a certain scene. Mia was hugging and talking to the teddy bear with a rapturous look on her face. Maybe not that all that different after all. It was the first time Yua had ever seen her look so happy. Then, for the first time, Yua realized her sister had been lying about not liking stuffed animals. She'd borne it the whole time for her big sister's sake. The next day, Yua found the drawing of a bear which Mia herself seemed to have sketched under Mia's pillow. Mia had slept holding it as she waited for Yua to tire of the stuffed animal. The same sort of thing had gone on for these past 18 years. When they celebrated their birthday, Mia, w、uh, sorry, Yua was always the one who blew out the candles on the cake. Mia had angered their parents by saying, like, I could ever do something so idiotic. And yet she's putting up such a Sundaray front just to keep her older sister happy. You moved up to the private Sume Academy after middle school. But Mia had intentionally misbehaved at school and lowered her marks. And as a result, she went to a public school. Due to tuition, their parents could only afford to send one of them to a private school. No matter how Yua tried to yield to her younger sister, Mia stopped her and prioritized her instead. Moreover, she purposely assumed the sort of demeanor meant to make others dislike her. And then New Gen happened. The first new gen incident which claimed the life of Mia Kusunoke. Mia ちゃんがいなくなって初めてもっとあの子のために何かできることがあったはずだってすごく後悔して Maybe Then again, maybe not. 
知ってあげればよかったしかも挙句に親に存在そのものを忘れられてしまうなんてこんなのあんまりですあんまりにも悲しいです<笑> The tragedy of Mia led Yua down a dark path of her own. Having squeezed out this many words, Yua had hit her limit. She took off her glasses and broke down crying, pressing at the corners of her eyes. Momose sat next to her and gently stroked her back. So, did Yua chan wa? Tori de jiken no koto shirabete itara shi no. Trying to find the truth from then her own way. Unfortunately, the unique manner of the new gen incidents and their. Yeah, their bizarre gruesomeness would、uh, prove too chaotic. Mia chan, i t a i n a n i a t a n ka? Shiru t a m i n So, y a t a i h e n d o t t o So, ste, Kitori no jinbuts o tskitometa. Here it comes. The penny will drop. The elephant in the room will finally reveal itself. And a certain person's life will once again be shattered into a million pieces.、Huh? Arm around Yua's shoulders, Momose gave Fan a look. Nishijo Takumi kun yo. There it is. Naru hodo ni. Even though Takumi himself will say the very following statement that he has absolutely no idea of who Mia Kusunoki even is. Ban leaned forward from the sofa as he rubbed his unshaven jaw. Unfortunately,、uh, Yua's logic only really tied into the third case onwards. いつだったか西条と追跡劇をしてたっていう女子高生の話を諸葛のデカから聞いたんだがもしかしてユアちゃんだったりするユアちゃんだったりするユアちゃんだったりするユアちゃんだったりするユアちゃんだったりするユ A phone call out of the blue like this is never a good sign. Smiling ruefully, he gave Yua and Mimose a light bow. The cell phone in his inner suit pocket was what had interrupted him. He quickly pulled it out and checked the old CD screen. Sua's name was displayed there. Oh, 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 oh. That's rather soon. Sua's voice was tense. Even the sounds of the other investigators rushing around in a panic behind him came through the phone. It would seem that Sua was at headquarters. Does that mean the seventh crime took place there, of all places? This isn't good. Eyes wide, Barn finally bit his lip, a bit of look on his face. Deducing the gravity of the situation from his bearing, Mimose and Yu had watched him worriedly. Wait. Oh dear. Oh dear, that's not good. I think I know who those three chuckleheads might be. The three unfortunate delinquents that decided to give Takami a hard time and got divine retribution from Kozue Orihara. But, uh. Even though Kozue has an unnatural desire to kill everything around her, including herself, we didn't actually, uh. 
check to see if she had killed them or not, and I doubt she actually even would. But I think she, despite her uh, traumatized past, even she... Um, although then again she did inadvertently cut off the arms of three of the classmates of her own who were tormenting her with her D-sword. And now we've gone right into new gen territory, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody's been playing mix and match, it seems. A very gruesomely macabre version. Probably, or just some mind games. Kozue's D sword. Upon reciting Sue's words in a groan, Ban scratched his head with the handle of his fan. Sorry about that adventurers, I just had to step away there for a minute there, but things are definitely taking another turn for the absolute worst. Of course, this is the first time. In fact, uh, actually scratch that. Barn hasn't even talked with Sewer about the uh, mysterious case of Sena Ayoi. Not that that name is familiar to uh, Barn. <laughs> Looks like the new gen criminal finished what Kozue Orihara started. That's bad. In fact, bad is the grievous understatement of the century. But that is the sole message Ban ended the call. That is unbelievably bad. Oh, oh my word. Meanwhile, back with the Takumi here at his uh, usual uh, afternoon spot, or morning and afternoon spot. Now that it was November, the sun seemed to set much earlier, as evidenced by uh, this nice sort of quiet looking sunset. And on that note, this that's going to be an end to this episode of Let's Play Chaos Head, and when we return return adventurers Takumi's troubles are about to get a whole lot worse as always adventurers until next we meet